one of football's longest serving and most charismatic characters. Sam Allardyce will tell you he's seen most things during his 40 year career. So it's fair to say he has some thoughts on it and the people he's met. Neil Cordy caught up with the big man and began by asking him if it's still the same game he started it. No, it's, uh, it's uh, totally different. I mean, uh, starting out was just a great joy, a great pleasure to uh, realise a childhood dream. And, um, you know, from a very early age, when you, you dream to be a professional footballer and you actually achieve it, is one of the few things that people can do in their lives. And uh, generally, their, their work programme is something that they would uh, do to earn a living and look after the family. But for me, it's always been. You know, getting paid to do what I love to do, and uh, and obviously throughout my playing career, that has been a it's been a great pleasure for me. And, uh, and then moving into to coaching and management and uh, and being successful was about passing my knowledge and passing my uh, experience on to bringing young players up and bringing teams up to be successful. And uh, in, in many ways, that's a greater pleasure than than. And play in it. The number of, of uh, managers in the Premier League and the ones that have been there for a decade, uh, you can count on, on one hand. What quality do you think is that's allowed you to have that, that longevity in, in such a, a tough competition? I think personally uh, it's man management. I think it's understanding people. I mean, I think it's, I don't think it's so much about the knowledge of football. I think the knowledge of football is ingrained with you over the experience of your life and you can regurgitate that like many, many people can. Uh, but I think the, 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 the understanding of people, the difference between you know, an African player and a Norwegian player is, is quite large, you know, so you have to understand the differences. Can I mention uh, Bolton, you know, where you really made your name <laughs> as, as a manager yeah, and you had um, the United Nations before even some of the, the many of the bigger clubs had that sort of a, a, a roster and do you think that you were a um, sort of a, a pioneer in that way? And yes I think that um, the I think the problem was that uh, being successful I mean I had limited budgets and, and not too much money to make got a lot of people quite quite jealous at that particular time particularly me fellow managers like you mean and um, uh, because we played a certain way against the uh, the big boys, um, which was uh, uh, to get a result and to expose their weaknesses, then that manager would then criticise us when they'd lost. And that label, unfortunately, uh, got tagged with us that was completely uh, foreign to what we were, you know. I mean, I could name you a team that was almost world class that played for Bolt Wanderers. And, we managed to get that through our scouting system and we got JJ Kocha, we got Ivan Campo, we got Fernando Hierro, we got um, Nicholas Anelka, El Adjujuf, you know, and uh, amazing the, the amazing list there, of players, yeah. Stalios Yanakopoulos from Greece who won the European Championships while he was playing for Bolton. And it was just a wash with talent and that was really got overthrown by other managers at the top level, criticising the way we might have played against them to get a result. So that was a little unfortunate, uh, but the, at the end of the day, as a team and as a, as a group of people together, uh, we were united in what we wanted to do. And we used that as a strength. We used to say, well, you know, if they want to think that way, that's fine. Does that bother you, or, or, that, that you got labelled um, in that way? It, well, it bothers me because it's continued into Blackburn Rovers. You know, it, you know, it got continued into um, uh, if I was going to get the England job. Mm. And uh, that was a real disappointing thing with the media. But yet again, I can understand the media picking up on it because it was other managers. I was more disappointed in the managers that did it. The Graham Soonesses, the, the Arsene Wengers, the uh, Jose Mourinho at the time. But yet Jose did exactly the same at Chelsea. You've expressed recently publicly your interest in, in managing a, a national team. Uh, could you tell us more about that? Is, that? is it partially because you're at 55 and you're thinking... Yes. That, well, that I, I think that, uh, I think that um, managers in the Premier League last about 1.4 years now. I've been doing it for 10. Um, so I know what I'm doing in that league. But, you know, it wouldn't be a problem to me to go into any any nationality in the world and and find out what their culture is like and, and I would adjust to their culture. And I think probably 
that's probably one of the problems why England slipped up in uh, in the World Cup. I don't think that uh, Fabio Capello learnt about the English culture. I think he tried to bring an English cult, uh, an Italian culture, to England, and that simply doesn't work. Well, what have your impressions been of Australian football? And you have a couple of Australian footballers on the list at uh, at Blackburn. Yeah, I worked with uh, Mark Maduka for a while at Newcastle as well. So uh, I think that um, your next generation is your most important one, though. And where's the next generation? Are you are you struggling like England? I mean, because England is really struggling. Certainly from your point of view, in Australia being your fourth most popular sport at the top level, I mean, it's a magnificent achievement to actually actually qualify for the World Cup in in uh, in succession two years on the trot for me and uh, you shouldn't take that lightly i know people were disappointed on the on the result in in uh, in the first game but boy they made up for the second two games after that and nearly made it until it becomes a a more popular sport in australia you know qualifying for the world cup is a great great achievement and neil cordy asking the questions there not many managers left like sam allardyce he, he's old mm. school he is, and uh, brought up some good points there. You know, mentioned Capello uh, in the England setup, not uh, adapting to the English way of style. That can we can sort of talk about Pim Verbeek maybe doing the same with Australia. Also talking about our game, how we shouldn't take it for granted that we made the World Cup uh, two two uh, well two times in a row. Uh, a lot of a lot of people expect a little bit too much. I think that we've done very well. It is the fourth sport in this country where we're we're going against some big. Um, Big other sports, I think uh, he's, he made some good points. I like that interview. Uh, you can see that he's disappointed that uh, people think he only plays long ball system, uh, route one system. That's a little bit disappointing, but at the end of the day, that's his style of football. It is, yeah. But I've heard every guy I've spoken to, they reckon he's a fantastic uh, players manager, hmm. which is an important part. It's an important role. He's had 10 years in the game. It's an important role to have the players on your side. Hmm. So if you want to play route one, they'll play it for you. Hmm. OK, let's uh, take a very quick break. Here's what's coming up on the other side.